Hello my dear friends, you're in the military of the summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And this video I would like to start from Germany because we received a lot of very interesting details and updates from Berlin. According to information we have, the German government has officially collapsed as Chancellor Olaf Scholz dismissed his liberal finance minister Christian Linder over disagreements over Berlin. Berlin's economic policies. According to information we have, this situation took place right after Germany's cabinet approves draft law on voluntary military service. I would explain to you. Germany's cabinet on Wednesday approved a draft law that would allow the army to gauge the readiness of the country's 80 years old to serve in the Bundeswehr as it looks to boost troop numbers for NATO obligations without resor resorting to conscription. So this is very important and as I understand the finance minister knows for sure the exact situation with the Germany's budget and as I understand he realized that this is something like a suicide for Germany's economy in this situation. At least this is an official version uh, about uh, the collapse of the government of Germany. But when talking about the global things that are were taking place in the world, I'll remind you that right after Joe Biden, the 46th president of the United States of America, was defeated by Donald Trump, we started receiving a lot of updates from different parts of the world. For example, right after Joe Biden was defeated, the Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, of Israel dismissed his Minister of Defense and according to information we have the Minister of Defense of Israel was uh, a man of Biden was Ma Biden's person furthermore we start receiving updates from Ukrainians that they are planning to withdraw their positions from the Kurds direction and to remove forces from there with the purpose to save them or something like this but uh, as I understand the Kursk offensive operation was let's say the Biden's personal adventure before the present elections uh, before the uh, Kamala Harris president elections and now we start receiving updates from Germany as I understand according to all these updates I believe the finished that the Minister of Finance of Germany also was uh, the man of Biden's administration and basically now Germany is going to change the Biden's administration person to Trump's administration person or something like this so let's wait let's see because I believe this is not the final case I believe that during the next several days we're going to receive more updates of how the in the world the uh, Trump's administration is changing one people for another now let's let's go to Ukraine and let's discuss the situation on the ground. And during the previous 24 hours, we received a lot of interesting updates. First, let's talk about the South Donetsk direction, where the Russians continue improving their positions. Today we got the video of how the Russians were taking under, under control this dense network of the fortifications. In this video that was published by the 39th a separate motor rifle brigade of the armed force of Russian Federation, we can see the significant number of total tanks that were attacked attacking the Ukrainian positions. This video was geolocated, it wasn't difficult to geolocate this territory because we have lots of things that uh, uh, can, is very very easy to find on map and this attack, this convoy of Russian vehicles were moving exactly uh, let's say along this line, I will draw this on map. So the Russian tanks were moving uh, from uh, this point, this is the beginning of the video and they were heading in this direction. Most likely the Russians were trying to attack these strongholds. Anyway, this video was the Russian tanks confirms Russian control uh, Russian control over uh, this dense network of the fortifications. Based on this video, we have adjusted the map in Russian favor. Uh, Pro-Ukrainian resources also reported that the Russians managed to improve their positions to the south of Elizavetovka. So these are the changes on the ground between the uh, 6th of November and the 7th of November. On the 6th of November, this territory was colored by different mappers as a contested area. Uh, we colored as a contested area. Other mappers shown this territory already under Russian control, but just today on the 7th of November we got 100% proofs about this. Now let's move further and let's talk about uh, the Silidova the Pakrov's directions. According to information we have during the previous 24 hours, the Russians managed to improve their positions further in the western direction and as a result of clashes, as you can see, the Russians managed to take under control another company stronghold. We're talking about this one. So as you can see, first the Russians 
were improving their positions during the previous few days, let's say along the pincers, about along the southern pincer, and the Russians were improving their positions along the northern pincer. And when this strong cold was causing colder, the Ukrainians most likely abandoned their positions uh, in the western direction to the next, uh, let's say, dense network of the fortifications, and the Russians captured this territory, and the Russians continue moving further. Most likely, until the Russians uh, take under control every single stronghold in this direction, they will not stop. Now let's move further and let's talk about the serious direction because from this territory we continue receiving the significant number of very interesting details and very interesting updates. First of all, I would like to talk with you about the changes on the ground. If you remember, during the previous days we were coloring this territory in Russian favor based on the videos uh, and based on the reports that we were receiving. I'll remind you once again that on the 30th of October, the Russians began very well-prepared offensive operation in the direction of the village of Ivana Daryevka, Vyemka, and the most important in the direction of this company stronghold, which we still don't know for sure whether the Russians managed to take this territory under control or not. And the Russians were attacking this territory using the significant number of forces, probably hundreds of soldiers and tens of armored vehicles. Uh, from the Ukrainian side, uh, this territory was under the protection under the defense of the 54th mechanized brigade under the forces of 81st air mobile brigade and of course 10th mountain assault brigade and now we don't know for sure whether the russians managed to improve their positions or not and once again we don't know for sure the status about this stronghold but of course we still keep this territory under Ukraine control because we don't have anything that can confirm additional russian progress as for the 7th of november today neutral mappers reported that the russians also managed to restore control over the village by the name of Vyemka and to take additional positions along the railways. So once again, this is the situation by the end of the 6th of November and this is the situation by the beginning of the 7th of November. So and uh, now we are waiting. We, we've been waiting for a very long period of time, up to one week, to understand what exactly is happening. And today on the 7th of November, the Russian sources, very reliable sources, began publishing uh, the, uh, the real uh, information about the situation situation in the direction of Ivana Darevka. Let's take a look uh, at this post. We consider it our duty to uh, publish this information. On Saturday, November the 2nd, as a part of Russian offensive on Bilogorovka in the Sivir's direction, the brigade commander of the 123rd Brigade of the uh, 2nd uh, LPR Corps with the call sign Kashtan sent uh, the 1st, the 2nd and the 3rd motorized rifle battalions and the 4th tank battalion into frontal assault without providing the fighters with the support. An unprepared attack without uh, accompanying support was doomed to failure. As a result, the Russians suffered the significant losses in tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, many fighters were uh, killed and even more wounded. And it's already the fifth day, but nothing has been done to ensure that the evacuation of the wounded guys. They are still in the forest awaiting help. So this is the situation. As we understand, and telling the truth, I was expecting something like this. The Russians were completely defeated during their attack in the direction of Ivana Darevka and this company stronghold. And most likely, every single square kilometer that the Russians managed to capture during this attack, most likely the Russians would be forced to abandon during the next several days. Of course, I'm not 100% sure about this. Of course, we need to wait for additional updates. And most uh, sooner or later, we're going to receive some. So let's wait. Let's Let's see and, and uh, what is going to be next. As for the situation on the ground, the Russians were bombing and attacking the south and severs direction with the purpose probably to uh, block the Ukrainians in this company stronghold and not to allow them to bring additional forces, reinforcements and reserves. Uh, so the Russians are still trying to do something. Maybe they're regrouping, maybe they're planning to get additional reserves, maybe they're planning to start the second wave of attack. Uh, the battle, as you can see, hasn't finished yet, but obviously if the Russians continue doing uh, attack in the same way, they will suffer the significant losses and they will be forced to pay the significant price for this stronghold. Maybe this is the only option. Nobody, I don't know for sure. Because the Russians were attacking in the serious direction and made a lot of attempts in the past and most of them failed due to different, uh, let's say, reasons. And we still don't know the exact information about the status of Vernikaminska, about the situation in Bilogora and of course about the situation in Serebrianka. Very complicated 
complicated and very difficult situation there. Now let's move forward and let's talk about the south in Kupin's direction. The Russians continued their offensive operation trying to clear the central part of the village by the name of Tirny. So the Russians are regrouping most likely. Very soon they're going to launch the final offensive for the purpose to defeat the Ukrainians completely and to take under control both villages at once. We are talking about Yampolovka and we are talking about the village of Tirny. As for the north in Kupin's direction, the Russians managed to improve their positions and uh, in direction of Kalisnikovka. Uh, currently, according to the geolocations that were provided by the Ukrainian sources, the Russians already established control over uh, 60, 70 or even 80 percent of the settlement. You see the changes on the ground. Uh, we see the video that was published by the Ukrainians and in this video we can see how the Ukrainian FPV drone operators were attacking the Russian forces exactly in this point. So let's take a look uh, at how the map was changing. This is the situation by the end of the 6th of November. This is the situation by the beginning of the 7th of November. According to geolocations, we have colored this part and different mappers also reported that the Russians managed to improve their positions in this forest. This is very important because if the Russians can take this forest under complete control, this is going to be a very powerful base, a very powerful foothold for further advancing in the northern directions towards the settlements of uh, Kupins, Kuzlavoy, Kavsharovka and so on. So the battle are taking place exactly on this territory. As for the Surja direction, during the previous 24 hours we haven't received anything from this territory. We, are, we still are waiting for updates uh, about uh, the uh, clashes between first battle between North Koreans and uh, the armed forces of Ukraine, because the Ukrainians reported there was something like this, but for now nothing. Nothing, just talks and just attempts to, uh, to attract additional attention to Ukraine and to get additional weapon. As uh, from the most important, of course, the report uh, from the, some deputies in the Ukraine parliament, commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, is preparing to withdraw troops from the Kursk direction. Sirsky has made preparations for withdrawal of troops from the Kursk region, only he did not say how much territory in the Donetsk and Kharkiv regions was exchanged to the Russians during the time and how many Ukrainian citizens lost their lives. Uh, so this is the situation, so during the next few days, most likely, we are going to start receiving updates of how the Ukrainians are retreating and this is going to be most likely the beginning of the third Russian wave of attack, third Russian counteroffensive. As for Russia, we have several changes, very important changes and according to information we have, uh, according to information we have, the West is discussing the possibility of lift lifting sanctions against Russia in the financial sector after Trump's victory in the US presidential election, writes the Financial Times. You know that now positions of the West are completely different. The United States of America, according to different papers, are planning to warm up the relations between Russia and the United States of America by lifting sanctions and by returning back Russia into financial sector of the Western countries. So this is at least the position of maybe possible position of Trump. Uh, to make these relations better, um, uh, most likely the United States of America will allow the Russians to provide their demands. What exactly they want if uh, to warm up the relations to finish the war in Ukraine and to return the situation back on the level, let's say, of 2020. And most likely the Russians will uh, send the following demands. The transfer of the Zaporozhye, Kherson and the Donetsk and Lugansk regions uh, to creation a buffer zone, uh, reparations for damage to Donbas and Ukraine's neutral status outside NATO. So Russia will force Western countries also to pay Russia for destructions in the Donetsk region that were made during the special military operation, not in Donetsk, but in the Donbass region. So let's wait and see, but as for European leaders, they have completely different opposite, completely different and opposite opinion. For example, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, the new um, the composition of the European Commission under the leadership of Ursula von der Leyen intends to prepare the European Union for a military confrontation with Russia and for the most unforeseen military scenarios. This was stated by the candidate for the post of European Commission, uh, Commissioner for Defense, former Prime Minister of Lithuania, Andrius Kubilius. So we see uh, that European Union has completely different opinion about the situation with Russia. Russia. And I'll remind you that just in the beginning we were talking that Germany is planning to uh, increase the number of forces. And that's it for the short video. Military summary channel reminds you we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye-bye.